Hello, friends, lovers, listeners. Dateables. Dateables. <laughs> There's so many terms. Hello, everyone out there in the universe. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is the year. This is it, y'all, because we're headed down a really bad path of dating if we keep doing the shit that we've been doing. And it mm -hmm. all goes back to the beginning of the pandemic. If you listen to some of our earlier episodes at the beginning of the pandemic, we were so hopeful. We were being romantic. We were being respectful. We were being so generous with our feelings and our emotions. And now we're all just bitter old bitches. That's how I feel, <laughs> at least. Yes, I think, you know, I think the West Elm Caleb saga really did shed some light on how much we've just accepted bad behaviors. Uh -huh. we've, we've normalized everything. And it really did cause us when we were talking about that on TV. And <laughs> we'll never forget that moment, CNN and NBC. <laughs> and we... It, it, I think it was one of those things when we first heard it, we're like, oh, yeah, this happens all the time. What's the big deal? But the mm -hmm. more we thought about it, we're like, yeah, it's, it is fucked that like this is happening. Like someone is saying that they can't wait to spend another day with you and can't wait to go out again. And then you never hear from them again. And why is that just normal? <laughs> right. And the fact that I still can't get over the fact that we went on CNN. Our debut appearance on <laughs> CNN was for fucking West Elm Caleb, okay? Right. We wasted our airtime on this fucker who is just the epitome of bad modern dating in general. So we got to change this up. Something's got to yeah. give. I think, though, it did cause us to – it caused it caused us to reevaluate why this was happening. And, you know, so often – we're definitely in each episode, we're talking about a specific topic. And you and I have these macro conversations a lot of like, why are, why is dating the way it is? Mm -hmm. And I think a big piece of it we talked about is threefold. I think the first section is people, like what a relationship means has dramatically changed for people. And it used to be in our parents' day and age and even before then, that it was expected that you were in a relationship and you married for stability and you had children. That was all the expectation. But in today's world, that has changed dramatically, partly, mostly to the rise of feminism and just having equality in relationships. And it's made us desire something a lot more. We want that soulmate. We want that life partner. We want that best friend. Oftentimes, it's one person for everything. And, you know, that is a lot to look for in a person. And I think it's great because we're children of divorce and we don't want to just be in a relationship to be in a relationship. But it also makes it difficult. And especially when now we're opened up to apps that give us a zillion singles at our fingertips, it's very easy to want to find the best person out there, almost like you're shopping on Amazon. And we don't have a blueprint for this. Our parents did not marry for love. I would argue most of our parents did not marry for love. It was for stability and safety that Julie was talking about. And we're the first generation to want something more in a relationship beyond just the stability and the safety because we know we can provide that for ourselves. And yet there is nobody teaching us the ways of love. Mm -hmm. And then you bring on the second component, which is online dating, dating apps. <laughs> Nobody before us at, have even experienced anything remotely similar no. to dating apps. So here we are just these, these, I don't, we're just innocent chickens going about every day thinking, how can I really, how can I really use these dating apps in my favor? And here we are again in a pandemic ridden world, and we are still on the dating apps looking for love and we're all lost in that navigation of love. Yeah. And again, the upside is I think our parents would kill. You've even talked about this, UA, when you've talked to your parents mm -hmm. about dating apps. And they're like, that sounds amazing. You can talk to all these people and we don't have to rely on family connections or friends of friends. And they are really amazing for this. Like I know I, I mean, I've met partners that I would never have met if it wasn't for dating apps. So there's a lot of great that has come from this. And especially in a world where we want it all from this person, we need to have options to find it all. 
But mm-hmm. the dark side comes when we're treating it like Amazon because that's not a human. And we're taking the human connection out of this. And that's the pro- That's the part that's a little problematic because we're treating people like disposable. And, you know, you can do a two-day return on Amazon, but <laughs> it, when you make that a person, it becomes like all sorts of fucked. And then the third aspect of why modern dating is so challenging for many of us is the gender roles are changing Uh, We talked about the Me Too movement. We talked about Mm -hmm. all of these gender-related changes that have happened in the recent few years that are that are causing people to pause before they act, which is a good thing. That is the positive of it. But the side effect of that is that everyone is experiencing inaction, right? (laughs) Right, because we're all afraid to kind of step forward or not even afraid, maybe that's not the right word, but we're overly cautious to take those moves and to act upon our feelings. So we're not feeling, you know, we're like, we expect certain things from the traditional ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say myself included and some of my girlfriends still expect maybe the male to pay on first dates, Mm -hmm. Yet, we also want to establish ourselves as independent, equal partners in a relationship. So what is that message sending to the people we're trying to date? And I think books like The Rules were extremely problematic because it basically gave women no power at all. Yeah, You were just waiting for men to, and this is, again, heterosexual relationships. That's all added another dynamic, too, that that's not the only world that we're in anymore. Mm -hmm. But I think in a heterosexual dynamic, women basically were told to lean back and to wait for the man and not do anything. And I feel like that was extremely problematic because you didn't put your love life in your own control. But I guess the only benefit it gave was that there were very defined rules of who did what. And you alluded to this UA. It's like with, you know, Me Too movement and men changing male masculinity, like there are the changes of masculinity. The problem that we're seeing is just no one's doing anything. There's just so much inaction. And honestly, that's the root of a lot of, these bad dating terms too is just in action. And that it brings us to where we are today, <laughs> where dating for some people feels so fucked up. And we feel the same way. It's not that the people are fucked up. It's the culture that we've created is going down a dark path. People are not being accountable for each other, not taking responsibility for their own actions. And as long as you're self-aware and say that you're self-aware, assholes can get away Mm -hmm. with (laughs) asshole-like tendencies. And then the media loves these dating terms. And all the dating terms are normalizing and humorizing bad dating behavior like ghosting, benching, breadcrumbing. We got to stop this shit. Yeah. (laughs) It's so bad. It's so bad. And I think it's that, you know, it's not that technology is the villain here i think technology is here to stay if anything is just going to continue to expand and it's so easy to blame apps it's so easy to blame all of technology for this downfall but the reality is there's humans at the other end of it and i do think the internet makes it really easy to be an asshole because you're anonymous basically and that doesn't excuse this behavior but it does propel why there's challenges So we need to figure out ways that we can still be good, decent human beings while leveraging technology, because Mm -hmm. I don't think the answer is just to ignore technology either. I've definitely done that before that I'm like, okay, I won't be on apps and I'll just see what happens organically like the good (laughs) old days. And then nothing happens. So it's not the solution to just boycott technology. Technology was made to help us yeah nobody created an app or a device and said i want to ruin humanity with this app (laughs) that was not their intention it is the people who are using the apps that is what's driving some of this fucked upness of what's going on and what's even more scary and julie and i literally have 
nightmares about this is dating in the metaverse okay yes. like we can barely <laughs> date on this universe and here we are trying to date in meta in the this weird metaverse that we're talking about where there is absolutely no human touch and we're all avatars like sounds that, horrible that sounds <laughs> awful. We're already having a hard time with human connection. How can we connect in a made up world that just makes no sense? I think the problem is that technology is almost getting developed faster than humans can adapt to it. Oh, that's an interesting point. And the people that are behind the technology, and I don't want to stereotype engineers because my boyfriend is an engineer, but <laughs> the stereotype of engineers is that they might not be the most socially in tune people. Just putting out a stereotype and <laughs> not saying everyone but if that's like who's at the forefront of technology then we need to remember that like humans need to catch up to it that's or it can such... become dangerous it's a really good point because isn't that the basis of every ai based movie out there where like the ai eventually becomes smarter than the human right <laughs> and then they run the universe because they're smarter yeah that is exactly what's happening because computers can build upon themselves on a daily basis and if we are not doing the same with our own personal development human humans will eventually lag behind and machines will outpace us and start right. And then now there's a new TV show they're casting for dating a robot. Like the future oh of dating. <laughs> can you date a robot? It's like a matchmaking show. I don't want to watch that shit. That shit no. cannot happen. No, no, it definitely cannot. And I think that is, it is terrifying. It really is terrifying. But I'm sure the people that made Tinder never intended for people to mm -hmm. like send dick pics and <laughs> you know ghosts on it like i'm sure that wasn't what they were even thinking they're probably like this is a way that we can expand people's like reach of who they're gonna meet and they can start chatting at the touch of their fingertips like they're not thinking about the the effects of behavior that comes with it right and with everybody that's trying to boycott online dating and saying they're dating a doing a dating sabbatical at the end of the day, there are few human truths here. We are all longing for human touch, human mm -hmm. connection. We would love to have someone to call on at the end of the day or when in need. We don't want to feel alone or lonely. And when we want to celebrate those life milestones, we want someone to share those moments with. Those are some human truths. Whether you are in the dating world or you're not, end of the day, when we go to bed, those are the things that we desire. And the reality too, is we're not going to change the larger world that's out here. All the stuff we talked mm -hmm. about at the beginning of just kind of the macro changes that are happening to dating are actually changes that far expand dating. It's pretty yeah. much every connection, every form of connection out there and just societal change at a large societal change at large. And it's good too. Like if just thinking about like this pandemic, if we didn't have the internet, how fucked would we be? We would have had yeah. no human connection at all. And it's good that women are empowered. It's good that we're being pickier about our partner. All this is good. It's just how can we like reframe the bad that's coming with it so we aren't discouraged and we can get to the good. Yes. So the question for all of us, and I'm sure if you're listening to this, especially welcome to our new listeners from our recent MSNBC appearance. Yeah. It's really nice to have you <laughs> with us. You're probably wondering, all right, so what is the solution? How can we change this? Do you girls have the answers? And we do. We have the answer. We've been, <laughs> we've been thinking about this for so long. And the answer is we got to we got to start a new dating manifesto, a new way of dating. And if everybody, imagine if everybody read this manifesto and believed in it and lived by it, then dating would be so much fucking better. Yeah, we got um, in our Facebook group, this gave UA and I both chills. We had one of our members, Rebecca. So shout out to Rebecca. Yay. She posted, imagine if all of us in this group committed to not ghosting and to telling people kindly after a date or two that it was not a good fit. Imagine how we could change the culture of dating and create more kindness in this world. 
in 2022, I commit to radical honesty as one of my core intentions. Yes. I have now told two men that I started dating that it was not a good fit for me, but that I would love to stay friends and have wished them the absolute best in their dating endeavors. They both thanked me for my honesty and we have remained friends thus far. Can we all commit to doing this instead of ghosting or leading people on? Let's send a ripple of kindness into the dating pond. Let's counteract impersonal and unkind dating culture. Yes, Rebecca. (laughs) Standing ovation. That's what it's all about. If we can all take this pledge to date the way we want to be dated, then we would not be in this conundrum that we're currently in. Right. Because I think people at the end of the day would rather have this honesty. And that doesn't mean just being nasty and mean. But what she wrote here is is nice. It's actually way nicer than if you were to leave someone on red or to not re- respond to them and to ghost them. Like that's, it's so much worse. And I don't know why we think we're like doing people favors or doing ourselves favors by doing this. Right. So what we did was we thought, Okay, we have all these terms for bad dating behavior. How can we reverse the effects of bad dating behavior? Well, then we should start naming good dating behavior, right? Yes. And then start championing those behaviors. So we we kind of came up with a few different common, popular bad dating behaviors. We're going to define what they are. And then we're going to talk about the reverse and then some name suggestions. Now, the names are not set in stone. We had a lot of fun brainstorming these. Some are bad. Some are real bad. Well, I think they're all good. Thank you very much, Julie. You said there's no bad at brainstorming, which I appreciated. And I'm I'm like, have you read mine yet? They are bad. I'm sure whoever came up with ghosting was like, what about the disappearing act? You know, like there there were other options and ghosting stuck. So you have to go through all the all the other terms before you get to the <laughs> term. So you all are going to be part of history making here because we're going to come up with names for good dating behavior that we're going to keep using in our day-to-day lives so we know when to recognize good dating behavior. Yeah. So you'll be able to vote on Instagram at Datable Podcast. So if you're not following us yet, this is your plug. This is your calling. This is your call to action. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's how we're going to do it, because I think it really does take us all coming together, all of us banding together to change yes. this. To fight it. It feels to so fight empowering, it. doesn't it? It's like we're making a movement. I love it. I'm ready to fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's talk about the first one, ghosting. Everybody talks about yeah. ghosting. Even my, my grandma will know that term ghosting. <laughs> So ghosting, what does it mean? It means it's a practice of like ending a personal or romantic relationship with someone by suddenly, without explanation, disappearing, withdrawing from all communication. And ghosting, we realize, is very similar to its cousin, zombieing, which is Julie. (laughs) You'll do the honors. Uh, Sure thing. So zombieing is, or zombieing takes the sudden exit a step further. Rather than performing a total vanishing act, the person who ghosted you might pop up again down the road. Their reemergence may be just as random as their departure. Mm-hmm. So what we're hearing here is avoidant behavior. Yep. People who do not want to deal with confrontation, who do not want to speak their truth, they lack the communication skills to even communicate their needs. And really, it just describes people who are not ready for a relationship, mm-hmm. but, but they're engaging in romantic relationships, making people feel like they are. So what is good behavior? Okay. So let's think about ghosting is not good behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think. Opposite. Yeah. So like Rebecca said, radical honesty. I think that's definitely a way forward. And that can be said in a really nice way. It doesn't mean that, you know, like what she said to the people she was seeing, again, that's doing them such a favor. And it seems like both of them were really receptive to hearing that. I think the other big piece is this of this is setting someone free Mm. that's the underlying piece here whether it's zombieing or ghosting i think ghosting even if it you know it's not maybe as long as zombieing but or let me say that again with ghosting if you don't have like an ending 
to this and some sort of closure, you're just wondering what happened or what you did wrong or if this person is going to reappear and zombie on you. And that is not fair at all. You're like basically give, like taking this person's like, or say this again, that's not fair at all that you're like, this person is now their mental energy is still on you. The person that ghosted. The worst part of ghosting is throwing it out into the ether and not knowing what happened to it. Mm -hmm. So the opposite of that would be persistent communication and closing the loop. Closing the loop is so huge here. And we've talked about this in a previous episode. We can't start things until we've closed things and completed things from the past. Otherwise, they just all bleed in together. So got to close the loop. And So we describe like the good dating behavior here. What are some dating terms that we can use to describe these good dating behaviors? We did a little brainstorm. Again, (laughs) let's just forewarning that this is just a brainstorm. There are no bad ideas. We're going to take a vote of all of these. But what are some of these terms that we came up with? Okay. So the first ones that I came up with were freeing, butterflying. Setting mm. the butterfly free. Ooh. Dalai Lama ing, because I think mm. of the Dalai Lama as being incredibly radically honest. Yeah. Monking, also on that same boat, a monk. Yeah. Um, Mariah carrying because it's butterflies. Oh, you know, there we go. Right? Yeah. Okay. Get to the next level. <laughs> We're like on the fly brainstorm right now. Uh, close looping is what I thought of. And then persisting could be interesting. These are just some ideas. Again, we'll throw these up on um, our Instagram and we can think of a good catchy name for it. Okay, so let's talk about zombieing too, because I feel like this has definitely happened to me before. Yeah. That the ghost comes back, they reappear. And I think that, you know, this one is really hard because you've maybe moved on already. And where it's coming from is the person doesn't want to shut the door. They don't want to like lose an option. And this comes from this world of wanting to have all the options to see what works. Out. I think it's just letting, allowing people to move on and closing that door, closing the loop again. And then setting people free when necessary, communicating clearly and being honest and not coming back to someone for selfish reasons. We've seen people coming back because they're lonely all of a sudden or it's a pandemic and they have all this time (laughs) on their hands. That's very selfish behavior. So being more intentional if you are coming back to someone. Thinking about like what terms that we could do for this. Mm-hmm. So maybe, I, I don't know, I was thinking like, like casketing, death, casketing <laughs> like putting it to dis- putting it to bed, officially putting it to bed, um, shutting the door. Those were some of the ones that came up to me. Yeah, I love it. When when Julie was like casketing and I was like murdering, choking. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going down a dark path here. Slashing. No. Uh, but what about like clogging or plugging, you know, something like to that just puts an end to things, shutting, extinguishing, sunsetting, corking, sealing. Those are all like fine, fin- final terms, I guess, what I'm thinking of. Like you're just putting a, a, a finale to it all. Again, just a little brainstorm here. Did any of those <laughs> stick? <laughs> So, so what's like a good sample text? I mean, I feel like Rebecca left one for someone. If let's say they've gone on a date and they it's just not there for them. What's a good way that someone can close the loop? We've seen a few of these come through something along the lines of I really enjoyed my time with you and, and, and getting to know you. Uh, as much as I enjoyed our time, I don't foresee a future or chemistry so i wish you the best of luck and you know wish you the best or something like that yeah i think yeah this one's tricky because i'm like on one side it's normalized to not you know like if the other person doesn't reach out it's normalized to not say that like you want to not see them again Mm mm-hmm but at the same time, is that just enforcing bad behavior that people are just avoiding things? This one's kind of a toss up for me because like, well, in the- yeah, well, that's the tricky part. I mean, the thing is, 
we're saying that you should always close the loop. So is when the loop is open is when maybe the other person asks you out again yeah. or they're texting you and they're like, how's your day? Do you want to hang out again on Sunday? That's when you should close the loop. But if like both people are not texting each other after a date, then I think just leave it. Right, right. I think closing the loop is like leaving someone just on red, I think is the worst when someone yeah. texts you and you just don't reply to them. So yeah, I think just something simple, simple what you said or I think Rebecca even said it really simply, like that let's be, it wasn't let's, a good fit. And yeah. I'd love to stay friends if you really do want to stay friends. And hey, you never know who their friends are. Yeah. And also, when you say it's not a good fit or I didn't see chemistry, there's no arguing with that. Right? You're not like, oh, I, I don't want to see you again because I don't like the way you dress. And then there's like arguing <laughs> that's right. very like, subjective. I could dress better. I could right. Dress. Yeah. But if there's no chemistry, nobody can argue with that. And it's just a, a nice way to end that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Should we move on to yes. roaching? Yes. The new gross. term that came up. The gross so gross. of the gross. So what is roaching? When the person you've been seeing is hiding the fact that they've been dating other people. And when you find out and confront them, they claim they didn't realize it was a monogamous mm. relationship. Mm. And the kicker here is why it's tied to roaching is once they do realize that it's not just one other person they're seeing. It's many, many, many people. Kind of like when you find a roach, there's yeah. usually a zillion more behind that roach. Another term for this is fuckboying. I mean, I think this is why people are in situationships. Like, they don't know what they are. They don't want to have the hard conversations because then it forces it to be a reality. Mm -hmm. they, it's like you don't want to hear that the person you're dating is dating a bunch of other people. It's kind of the worst thing in the world to hear that. But actually, the worst thing is to think you're in a relationship, pretend like you're in a relationship, cut yourself out from other prospects. Mm -hmm. and then learn this down the road. And also the problem with roaching is that a roach comes into your home not knowing that it's not their home. You didn't give them boundaries. So of course they're going to they're going to just take over unless if you try to extinguish them or tell give them some boundaries, you cannot come into my home. Same with this. It's this West Elm Caleb situation again. People are not setting the boundaries or having the DTR conversation. So then of course, like everyone's right. going to try to maximize their dating opportunities. Well, I think it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning is that people want this ideal partner because they feel like they need to check all the boxes and do all the things. So yeah. by keeping all your options open and seeing multiple people at a time, I would say in theory, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're honest about it. I think investing in a single person, I think that it's so tempting to want to date all the people to find the best match. But the reality is the serial dating, sometimes like you never get to know someone deep enough. I think that the problem with serial dating is you never get to know anyone deep enough and you never get to be seen or heard truly and, you know, move to that next level of a relationship. The reality is we do create love and we create relationships you're mm -hmm. never going to just stumble onto the perfect person. And the reality, too, is that all the stuff on our checklist that dating apps kind of give us the defaults to look at, like height and occupation, all that stuff is ultimately not what matters in a relationship. It's what does this person show up for you and are they kind and honest and you know, all the, the, tr the tr qualities that really matter. And I feel like if you're just roaching and spreading yourself too thin, you never actually get to see that anyways. Yeah. And the other problem with roaching is that it's too surface level. You're not mm -hmm. getting to know people and spending the time to get to know people. And it's not intentional or mindful dating. So good dating behavior would be, even if you're not dating one person at a time, you're being very intentional about it. So some potential terms we have for this. I'm, I'm actually going to move up some of my other terms now that we're talking about this. Do you want to leave some of mine out? <laughs> I was thinking of like what other animal is on the other side that they commit to a single partner. 
and beavers apparently are super monogamous mm. and wolves. So apparently wolves are till death do us part. So it could be beavering or wolving. Those were the two I came up with or love bugging. That one's just cheesy, but came up with it anyway. Super cute. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I was just, I went the opposite of roaching. I was like fumigating, exterminating. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but that's more just like calling out the roaches, right? Yeah. That's like also good dating behavior. But then if you are talking about intentional, mindful dating, I was thinking sous vide, you know, just I like, like that. slowly cooking it. And when the flavors are full, then it's ready to eat, you know, it's just a slow burn. I like that. I think nesting, you put that one in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Yeah. I think that one's, you know, I guess roaches technically can nest, but not <laughs> in the way that you want them to nest. <laughs> Too much fun. Too much fun with these terms. Okay. But I guess when you are, when you do find out, okay, I guess it's twofold. If you do find out the person you're dating is roaching, it's time to have this conversation mm -hmm. of, well, one, you have to know, are you okay with that? If you're not okay with that, then you have to establish some boundaries. And the boundaries could look something like, I've really enjoyed getting to know you. I'm, I, I also enjoy getting to know you um, one at a time. And I would really like it if we could spend, you know, more one-on-one -on -one time together mm -hmm. and um, not date other people at the same time and see what they, you know, what they say about that. I like that. I think it's really important to lead with what you want and not just be like, so what are we? Right. And that's a very ambiguous. So I like just stating what you want or even just like, hey, I've really enjoyed getting to know you the last month or so. I'm looking for someone that like will move towards a monogamous relationship. What are you looking for? Yeah. Even if you're not ready to like put it all out there, I think we can't be afraid to have these conversations and a DTR does not need to be this scary, you know, will they marry me or not conversation. It could just be checking in with the headspace that they're at. Mm -hmm. And I really think this goes back to like the societal problems at large too, is that, you know, relationships have changed and our desire for them, which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing that we're like just marrying for stability and financial means, but it also means that we've put at the forefront, personal development, we put our careers first, we put, um, you know, moving to new cities or friendship and all that. And that's very important. I don't want to underestimate that at all. But the downside is that it's, it's made us not be able to have these relational conversations with mm -hmm. romantic partners. And for some of us, relationships just are these toxic dating behaviors and dating trauma that comes with it. So it's really hard when we don't have like good examples of relationships. And I know I struggled on this for so long of just being able to have a conversation opposed to having someone be a mind reader or, you know, being afraid to have a conversation because I didn't want to hear a certain response, but learning that it actually is doing you a much bigger favor in the long run to know if your partner is roaching all over town opposed to like being in this fantasy that you guys are an exclusive relationship. And if you find that you're the one doing the roaching, many <laughs> of you will be guilty of this. It's time to pause and think, why am I roaching? What is this for? Am I looking for validation? Am I trying to occupy time when I'm alone? Am I mm -hmm. afraid to, of true, deep connection? Or am I running away from something? Those are all kind of symptoms of roaching. And it's good to step back to recognize it and, and think about really the why behind what you're doing. That's a really good point because I think a lot of us are like, I'm just picky, which I know mm. is like the most annoying thing to hear. I hate it. And I think you could say like, I want the perfect partner because this is a life partner and it's important. And I totally think you should be picky in some ways. Like this is the person you're going to be spending all your time with. So it yeah. should just be like any random off the street. But at the same time, if we're always like just trying to find the best and what we perceive as better, then no one's going to be good enough. And therefore, we're just going to be alone. Oh, yes. That is 
the dating in the metaverse. That's what I see <laughs> happening. So let's prove You're like that. alone with your VR headset. Yeah. So sad. So sad. You can't let as that an, happen. As an avatar, you know, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. That's too weird. It's way too weird. <sighs> okay. Okay. Next one on the list. Benching. Ooh. And the sister term, breadcrumbing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eating those breadcrumbs on a bench. That's what I picture. (laughs) What does this mean? Okay. So maybe some of you haven't heard these terms as much. They're not as prevalent as terms, but they happen every day. Benching is when you like someone enough to keep seeing them, but not enough that you want to lock them down. So you keep them as an option, but you continue to date around. Uh, This is exact uh, definition of a situationship. It's Basically, you're in a thing with someone, but it's not defined and you haven't really deepened your relationship at all. Yeah. And I think it really comes from, you know, what we were saying before of being afraid to have those conversations, to set boundaries. And I think there is is a self-fulfilling prophecy, too, is that being in a situationship makes us feel less alone. It makes us feel like we have someone, Mm -hmm. even though the best thing we could actually be doing is holding out for someone that is in it as much as we are. Yeah, no kidding. I'm kidding. So the the opposite of this is, don't you want to invest in a... I mean, I hope we're all just looking for like that one true connection. You want to invest in one person at a time. And it feels good to both be committed to each other and spending the time to get to know each other as opposed to like just surface level string someone along what's the point of string someone along unless if you're looking for validation again right goes back to that that point of maybe you should step back and think why am i why am i benching someone yeah i just remember the principle that's always stuck with me was uh when I believe Logan Yuri talked about it on our initial podcast that we did with her way back. The science of dating is when someone, when you, there's a return policy that you feel more ambiguous towards the item, mm. but when there isn't a return policy and you commit to it, you start to love it even more. Mm-hmm. And I think with modern dating, it's easy to bench because of this promise that there's always someone else out there on the apps or that we have all this choice and options that it makes it easy not to commit to anyone and just keep going and always keep people around peripherally. Yes. What is that called? Um, cognitive dissonance, right? Cognitive dis- dissonance. Is? Cognitive dissonance. Um It's like when you, oh, this is like when you hold two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values at the same time, but then you, maybe it's not that. Okay, we can skip that. But basically like your brain, your brain, your brain will be committed to whatever you want it to commit to. Exactly. So if you feel like there's an out, then your brain is like, nah, I'm going to keep looking for other options. Right. Right. So some good behavior. I think it's investing, you know, investing in the person. I'm a proponent of, you know, trying to see if something will work. If you think there is something there, seeing if it will work. And I'd rather end a relationship sooner if it doesn't work and then move on over juggle all these people at surface level and never be sure about anything. So I think, you know, making that investment Um, investing in that single person, committing like the power of commitment that we were just talking about and just spending enough time to actually evaluate if you even like them. I think the problem with benching is that you're probably only seeing them once a month or once every other couple weeks and maybe not even for that long a period. And just the reality is you're just not going to get to know someone at the level you need to know to to see if this person's a long-term prospect. Mm Mm-hmm. And again, not doing things out of selfish wants because you don't want to be alone or you want an activity partner. That's not a good enough reason to bench someone or string them along. So that's also 
the positive behavior is being respectful of the people yes. you're dating, respectful of them and their time. I love that you're talking about investing because I feel like some of your terms, Julie, are very much in the gambling realm. So maybe <laughs> you want to talk about those. <laughs> I had picking your pony. Yes. Love it. <laughs> pony. Pony. You, know, you got to pony up. Pick it. <laughs> uh, what I had that we've coined before is Sunday test. That's more of just like, can you, how do you feel with this person on a Sunday when you're doing nothing, watching TV, on the couch? How fun, How much fun are you having with this person? How much are you enjoying your time? And I made this correlation just because I think the byproduct of benching is that you're not giving people enough time. So true. So true. And that's why. Oh, yeah. Doubling down, blackjacking. Those were my yep. other gambling terms. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what inspired me to um to use chopsticking because <laughs> with chopsticks you can only pick up so many things like at once. That. I like that one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> uh, match sticking as well. When you have a burn a matchstick, you can only Ooh. burn we burn that one matchstick. Burn right? that one candle, right? Right. Yeah. And then plucking, you know, I just I was just like plucking my eyebrows this morning. I was like, damn, I can only pluck one hair at a time. Can you believe I that? I was gonna say that's gross, but it's not gross about roaching, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking outside the box, kids. I like Thinking that one. I like it. <laughs> And then most of you are probably wondering about breadcrumbing mm. and how this one is different or similar. And I think they're very similar. It's the same route that you're just not getting this whole person. I think with breadcrumbing, it's more that they're just giving you these little breadcrumbs, these little hints of a yes. relationship. Maybe they're watching your Instagram yes. story. Oh my god! Maybe they're texting you, but not really committing to plans. Or maybe they're even committing to plans but it's like once every month right or they're like deep liking your post from yeah like they're giving you some like a little but not the full pie which is kind of where i came with up with the top the term pieing which you a mistook for peeing (laughs) i was like peeing that is an interesting (laughs) term i think it'll go viral we just have to explain it (laughs) You're like, I don't see the connection, but I'll trust you. I'm down. I'm down. We'll make it work. But I think with all of these, it's like people want this companionship, but they Mm -hmm. don't want to put in the work. And I think that actually is a byproduct of the current time society at a large, too. It's like we want, you know, we want like a car at a touch of a button. So we like have Uber. Mm-hmm. And it's on demand. But like love doesn't work that way in relationships. Like you can't just press a button and expect for it to show up. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times like we don't have the desire to actually do this work because everything else is so easy the way right. that technology is built it. So also when it's not easy, we just give up and we're like, this isn't the right fit. Let me bench this person. Yeah. So the opposite of that behavior would be like you said diving in head first accepting people for who they are and investing time into other people and making your intentions clear so you said pieing which is like giving someone the entire pie which inspired me to say caking which is like having your cake and eat it too i like that one and then what are the other ones musketeering i think you might have added that one i like oh yeah well you didn't do the deep end ones oh i don't know about these ones okay bye (laughs) diving into the deep end deep sea diving they're kind of like they're not like catchy enough it was more of like diving could be good yeah diving yeah i came up with musketeering because it's like all for one one for love you know just okay go all in on it notebooking like the movie i don't know why i just felt so inspired notebooking like you'll give up everything for that person i like it <laughs> and then cry <laughs> just kidding. and then i also said like the opposite of benching i was thinking about it mm-hmm. it's like when you think of the bench like i don't know i was definitely on the b squad a lot in high school <laughs> sports so i feel like i was always on the bench so i think of like the a team varsity I don't know. There could be something with that. Yeah. Or the starting team. Starting team. Yeah. Yeah. The starting lineup. Starting lineup. Starting, starting lineup. lineup. Yeah. Do you hear me <laughs> typing? Because I'm typing these out <laughs> right now. 
Ah, uh, yeah, it just feels so much better even saying these terms, right? It does. So, yeah, I mean, there's, like, I guess if you're in a situation where you feel like you're getting breadcrumbed, or you feel like you're being benched, you're basically not a priority in both of these. Yep. How do you handle it? Yep. You, first, you got to recognize that this is happening to you. And then you start looking at our positive dating terms and think, in a healthier situation, this is how my partner would treat me. Mm-hmm. They would be musketeering. They'd be diving. They'd be, <laughs> they'd be A-teaming. You know, look at these terms and think, I want to be aligned with these terms as opposed to like the breadcrumbing and the ghosting. And I think there's nothing wrong with saying, I. you can even call people out and say, I feel that... I'm being breadcrumbed Mm -hmm. (laughs) right now and I really want the whole pie. And so that's, you know, I wish you nothing but the best. Say that line too. And then, you know, I think this is the end. Yeah. I mean, I think that it's definitely some of it is in the people we choose. And that's part of it is that we need to find the people that will give us that pie. Because it's a lot easier to find someone that wants to give the pie than forcing them to give the pie. Yep. But I also think it's ourselves too. We talk about a lot this game of relationship chicken that people are in. And I think what happens sometimes in breadcrumbing and benching, it's like, well, this person only wants to hang out once a month. I'm going to be busy or I'm not going to reach out. And I think it's, you know, a lot of bad behavior stems from ego and fear and not wanting to, like, be the loser, like, wanting to be the winner of this. And it's so, like, it's almost like a competition, which is not what a relationship is at all. So I think it's, like, how can you show up the way you want to be, like, shown up for? And at that point, if someone's not meeting you, then you know it's not them. But Mm -hmm. I think just blaming the other person in walking away isn't always like the best step. I think, you know, in your gut too, like, is this something that is worth giving a shot and not maybe forever and ever, but like, is there a defined period that I can give it a shot and see if things, if we show up differently for each other? Yeah. The ultimate barometer is to look at what you're looking for and do your actions and their actions line up to what you're looking for. It just, it is shocking to us how many times we hear people saying they want a healthy, loving relationship where both partners are giving each other 110%. Yet in the dating game, they're ghosting, breadcrumbing, benching, roaching, you know, all of the the ways to show the least amount of interest. Isn't that shocking to hear that the dichotomy of the two behaviors, what you're looking for versus what you're actually doing. So for all of you who are dating, who are experiencing this right now, the first thing to do is to look to yourself and ask, am I guilty of this bad dating behavior? Mm -hmm. And if we can all be more responsible for our own actions, then it will make modern dating so much better all around. Yep. And that's the commitment. That's the new manifesto is date the way you want to be dated. And you'll be, first of all, if you do this, you'll also be able to recognize if someone is not coming to your standards because you'll easily see that you're giving that and you're not receiving it. So I think that's step one. And then two, I personally would always rather know that I was doing all I could and realize that's just not the right match than have that like, what if I had approached it this way or what if I hadn't played this game? So I think removing some of that is only going to help you. And we can't control other people. And there's maybe not everyone that's on board with this new way of thinking. Maybe people are still doing the ghosting, the breadcrumbing and the roaching, But all we can do is, you know, say thank you to them for making way for the person that isn't going to do that stuff. Amen to that. So raise your right arm. And if you are in public, (laughs) raise your imaginary right arm. Just raise raise it anyways. Raise it anyways. Raise your right (laughs) hand. Raise your right arm and hand. Open your palms and pledge this. Repeat after us. I insert your name. I, you, I, Julie, yes, pledge 
to date the way I want to be dated. Again, I, insert your name, pledge to date the date way, the way I, I want to I be want dated. Be dated. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You just pledged to all of the daters out there and to us. And if you didn't do that, then bad. Bad, yeah. bad, bad. And when you take this pledge too, the pledge is to also not let the people that haven't taken this pledge or haven't took this pledge get you down. Mm. They are not there to get in your way of finding your person into making date the dating life you always wanted. All you can do is say good riddance and maybe send them this podcast episode. Exactly. I was just going to say that. You don't even have to say much. It was nice getting to know you. Here's a link to this episode. Yep. Listen to it. If Bye. someone goes to you, just send them the link. <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> and also, did you know that we're now on Cameo? So if someone <laughs> does ghost you, bench, bench you or breadcrumb you, you can get us on Cameo <laughs> to make a video and to send to them. You don't even have to say anything. We'll just do all the dirty work for you. And if you want a pep talk before your next date or you want to, you know, just bitch, get it out about that ghoster, <laughs> we're here for you. We are so here for you and we'll always be here for you. So thank you for listening to our our new dating manifesto. We, we feel so good about this and that's why we wanted this to be the opener. We really feel that if we can all take this pledge and stick to it. We will we will avoid that hell of a dating metaverse scenario <laughs> that we just set up at the front of this episode because we sure as hell don't want to be there. 